Hello and welcome to Salute. Today's program is all about an award-winning documentary, and I have the filmmaker here who I've been looking forward to meet, Mr. Bill Suki. Nice yeah. to meet you, Bill. Bill has produced over a dozen PBS documentaries. His films have received several Emmys and numerous other national awards. His latest film is entitled Silver Wings, Flying Dreams, the complete story of women Air Force service pilots and reveals a little known chapter of American military history. And I have to tell you, Bill, I really was excited about meeting you because I follow military history myself and uh, I need you to tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got started in all this. I started looking for subjects that people didn't know that really needed to be revealed, and uh, I found some really interesting programming, and this, this was one of them, the Women Air Force Service Pilots. Yeah, what, what really sparked your interest in the women? Uh, I had a friend of mine, uh, a woman that is a pilot, call me and said, have you ever heard of the WASP? And I said, no. And she said, I've met a few of them, and these are women that during World War II ferried planes and uh, did a number of other jobs for the military. And no one has ever done a real documentary on them. There's a few books on them and some short pieces, but no one's ever told their story. And so I did the research, uh, and I thought you know, it was definitely a story that had to be told. And then I met several of the WASP. And once I met them, uh, I was just uh, taken back. They were just incredibly sharp, uh, what they did, their stories, what they went through. And I knew right there that this is something that the public needs to know about. And so we uh, spent three, four years making the documentary. Tell me about, about making the uh, documentary. How, how did you put all these women together and get this thing and going? That, that wasn't the it easiest took three thing. three years, is that what you told me? Yeah, and at least three years of, of actual production. And uh, a lot of it is because you're dealing with people that are uh, at least in their late 80s, many in their mid-90s. To get their stories out, I did want to film them in their home, you know, wearing a floral dress and, uh, on right. their couches. For them to really feel uh, and tell their stories, I wanted them in their original uniforms. I wanted them sitting in front of P-51s and T-6s or B-17s, planes that they actually flew. So what we did is we uh, gathered WASP together and uh, found where these planes would be. So we went to uh, Kissimmee, Florida, to Warbirds. They had a number of planes, oh, yeah. World War II planes there, and they lent us one of their hangars and their planes so we could shoot interviews uh, in front of those planes. Because once they were around the planes they flew and in their uniforms, uh, their stories just came, came out uh, so much better. Uh, they, they remembered so many more things. And then we traveled all over the country. We went to Midland, Texas, uh, where the Commemorative Air Force has a lot of their uh, restored World War II planes. We brought a bunch of WASPs there. Uh, we went to uh, uh, Sweetwater, Texas, where the uh, WASP uh, uh, Museum is, and that's where the WASP learned to fly. That was the first uh, flying school for women in the world for the military. We went to Keystone Heights because we needed to shoot an area that looked like it was 1940. Yeah. We wanted to get B-17s and B-24s taking off and landing, but we wanted it to look like the 1940s, and the little airport in uh, Keystone Heights has no buildings behind the runway, and uh, just woods and trees, and it looked like it was 1940, so we brought uh, all these bombers there and had them land and take off, looking like they were back in history. Did any of them get to fly back in one of those, those planes? Did yes. We had... Uh, the Stearman bi-wing planes that they originally learned to fly in. And we went up and shot plane to plane, film plane to plane with wow. them. Here's 92, 93-year-old women piloting the Stearman. They love to fly. They will f get in any plane that, that lets them fly in it. Yeah. I, I've been very fortunate here through Lakefront TV and this the Salute program to work with uh, the Asia's Aviation Dreams Foundation, mm -hmm. you, you know them, and uh, so we, we've been in a Stearman, and we've been in a B-17, and we've even been in a B-29, which was named Fifi, and I, mm -hmm. I learned something from your documentary. You wanna, can I, can I tell that, or you wanna tell that? Yeah, well, uh, uh, one of the reasons we went to Midland, Texas, uh, was because Fifi would be there. Now, Fifi is, uh, or at that time, was the only 
uh, super fortress B-29 actually flying. When Boeing came out with a super flying fortress, the first one crashed and uh, it killed the entire crew. It was so dangerous to fly that they named it the Widowmaker. Yeah. Male pilots refused to fly it. So they trained the WASP, two WASP, to fly the plane. They brought the B-29 uh, into bases in America where the B-17 and B-24 pilots from Germany that were bombing Germany when that was over were stationed. And the girls would fly the B-29 in, circle, land it, and then they would get out, they would take off their headgear, and their hair would fall to their shoulders, and the men would look and see that there's a 20-something woman flying the biggest bomber in the world. And so they stopped complaining. Yeah, tell me about some of the other jobs that the, uh, the WASP did. Well, the WASP did a, a lot of jobs. The main job for the WASP, once they graduated and got their wings, was to ferry airplanes. We were building airplanes so fast during World War II and all of our male pilots were overseas in the war itself. They needed people to take the planes and bring them to the shore where they would be transported over to Europe. So they f flew over 50% of every plane that was ferried in the United States. Uh, B-17s, B-24s, B-25s, P-51s, P-39s, you name it. They flew them and picked them up and brought them to uh, where they have to be transported out of the country. The other jobs they had were training. They already had to have licenses before they became WASP, but male pilots didn't. Male pilots came out of high school, some of them out of college, but had to be taught how to fly. Mm. Well, the women were the flight instructors once they graduated. They also did jobs that uh, some of the male pilots didn't want to do. Uh, they pulled uh, targets for live anti-aircraft fire. I can so understand that. They would be <laughs> flying and, you know, they'd, they, they'd look down mm. and they realized there's 18-year-old kids down there shooting live, you know, mm. rounds at them. And uh, I know uh, Helen uh, looked up and said, you know, I was doing that. And once you see the tracers go in front of your plane, you definitely get the hell out of there. <laughs> and so they did a lot of things uh, that would j just help the war effort. Tell me some of the things you learned about the WASP you know, when you met those people. Uh. Well, first, they're, they're amazing women. Uh, it, it was an honor to, to actually make a film and reveal uh, this little-known chapter in American history. 25,000 women wow. volunteered. They volunteered, and they all had to have uh, pilot's licenses already. I, I wouldn't have thought there would be that many. They only took 1,830 of them into the program. Only 1,074 actually became women Air Force Service pilots, actually made it, got their wings to be WASP. So almost 50% of them washed out. They were very, very strict with them. They went through everything that any male did, all the calisthenics, all of the ground training, all the flight training. Uh, so uh, it, it was an amazing story what they put up with and mm. with discrimination and people thinking they couldn't do it. Bill, you called it the complete story of the WASP. Why complete story? Well, there's a, uh, you know, there's a number of books out there. There's some short videos out there about the WASP, but they all focus on the two years that they were actually in the Army Air Forces. And so our film talks a lot about their experiences as being pilots during World War II, but also carries the story on their fight to get veterans' rights. And this is a story that, that most people don't know about. You know, it's a story about, about women's history, uh, about women that broke the glass ceiling in the 1940s. Not only did they serve our country and help us win the war, but it took 66 years after they did that before they were recognized for their service, and they actually got the, the Congressional Gold Medal. So the idea of getting this out in front of people is really important. So I work with the Daughters of the American Revolution, and uh, who helped sponsor uh, the program, and uh, we set up in theaters and in churches and in museums uh, and invited veterans and their families and the public to come to watch the movie for free. And the reaction was incredible because no one knew this 
chapter in history. And when they see the women interviewed and they hear their stories and what they went through and that they didn't receive any benefits and it took so long to fight for the benefits, it changes their, their whole view about uh, American military history. Yeah, you know, after World War II, you, you see the videos with the guys coming home mm -hmm. and getting the kisses and the ticker tape parade. Uh, the women's Air Force service pilots, their ending of their career, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it, again, it was a, uh, uh, a, a bittersweet end. They proved they could fly, you know, the, the fastest fighters, the biggest bombers that the world has. They had a better safety record than the male pilots had. But yet, they were supposed to be brought in to the Army Air Forces. But they were volunteers. They were considered civil servants. So when they didn't need them anymore because the war was coming to an end, they just disbanded them. And they got no benefits. Bye. Whatsoever. See you later. And they were brokenhearted because they loved to fly. They did a great job. And they were supposed to go in to, the, to become part of the, the Army Air Forces. And uh, you know, it was an experiment. And no one thought that they could put up with Army training. No one thought that they could fly these bombers. And they proved them wrong. But it wasn't until the 1970s, 30 years after, that the Navy came out and all the headlines read, for the first time ever, women are going to fly American military aircraft. And when that happened, the WASP said, wait a minute. What about me? And exactly. They said, what about us? We lost 38. What about us? We helped win the war. What about us? We flew everything. And they got together and they started lobbying Congress. And uh, it still was, it was an uphill battle, but they got partial veterans' rights at the end of the 1970s. And then it took another 30 years before Congress actually got together and said, you're actually heroes for what you did, and gave them the Congressional Gold Medal. Uh, I'll tell you, I, I watched the documentary, and I, I was really impressed with it, and I, I hope everybody out there gets involved in, you know, seeing this. Uh, these women went through basic training. They went through a lot. I mean, there was a lot of them would wash out. And, yeah. and they had, they had, like you said, they had to know how to fly a plane before they even got in. Yeah. And uh, it, it's truly, a, and I think you did a fantastic job. But tell me about the DVD. It, uh, the docu documentary is available on a DVD and soon to be distributed to schools and libraries as well, being aired on national, international television. Want to bring us up to yeah, date well, about the Right now, yeah, uh, the, the DVD that, that we do have here uh, is available for uh, personal use. Uh, if you go to uh, silverwings-flyingdreams.com, you can see some of the videos that are on the DVD, and you can donate uh, to receive one. Uh, but we have... Uh, education distribution through a film media group out of New York that will uh, offer the DVD to every library, every high school, every college and university in North America. Uh, and for teachers, you just go to www.films.com and then type in Silver Wings and you'll come to the page that your school can then get the streaming version of this for your classroom, which has uh, a full instructional design for teachers on it. And then for television, it's being distributed by uh, Expresso Media International out of London. It's going to be uh, distributed worldwide to television. Well, that's great. I mean, this is, this is a story that should be told. It's know, a story that, that's long overdue. Yeah. And uh, it, the news has picked up a lot of it. People do know who they are now. We have shown the film has been featured in, in every major air show across America. Uh, and has been, you know, featured uh, at uh, American Airlines uh, museum theaters in Texas. Uh, so people have now been introduced to the Wasp, but they really don't know the story until they see the movie. Uh, and actually, it, it's uh, going to be made into a feature film next year. Oh, really? And so that will be, you know, another step into educating the public about what these women did and what they went through. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, I give you a lot of credit for because that's that's one thing I really believe in. I've used I've done a lot of educational programs mm -hmm. over the years and stuff, and you, like you say, they don't teach stuff yeah. like the WASP in schools, you know, and, and all these other uh, great events that happen to, to make this country what it is. Well, I think that's uh, 
you know, so important for us to know where we came from. And our military history especially shows what we sacrificed to get where we are, to have the freedoms we are. And so doing a film like this uh, makes a big difference to me that I've contributed to, you know, educating people about something that they should know about, that they should be proud of, that will influence them and inspire them what these women did. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one of the things I always do, and even it is on the DVD, is that there's a printable instructional guide on here. Mm -hmm. So if somebody has this, they can put it in their computer and print out the whole teacher's guide. Uh, so you have classroom uh, activities to do, you have tests, you have everything already on the DVD for people that are going to use it. Oh, that's great. And so it, it's important to me that, that uh, when you get a program out like this, you give the people, the teachers, uh, the instructors, anyone that's going to be using it, all the material they need so they will use it. Uh, and the, the DVD itself has five shorts on it about the making of the DVD. It has a music video. It has a memorial video on it. It has a, a piece about their planes, which uh, uh, is something we'll probably uh, put into this program. Uh, a short video showing all the planes that they actually flew when well, they were let's, lost. Can we look at that now? Uh, yes, we can look at it right now. All right, let's check it out. The Wasp flew 60 million miles in every type of Army Air Force's aircraft and in every type of non-combat mission. Their safety record exceeded that of male pilots doing the same jobs. Wasp were trained to pilot everything from the Stearman biplane to the B-17 Flying Fortress. Aircraft similar to those piloted by the WASP have been restored and now appear in air shows around the country. Just like male combat pilots, WASP trained in the North American T-6 Texan, known as the Pilot Maker. A favorite of many WASP was the single-seat P-51 Mustang, a fighter bomber used for long-range missions and to escort bombers in raids over Germany. WASP ferried hundreds of P-39 fighters to the West Coast, where they were brought to Russia for use by the Soviet Air Force. WASP trained to pilot multi-engine aircraft such as the B-25 Mitchell, a twin-engine bomber used successfully throughout all theaters in World War II. WASP also piloted the B-24 Liberator, a long-range heavy bomber used in both the European and Pacific theaters. WASP ferried the Boeing B-17, by far the most well-known bomber of World War II. The definitive heavy bomber of World War II was the B-29 Super Fortress. Several WASP trained to pilot the aircraft and demonstrate its safety and flying abilities to male pilots. The B-29 is most remembered as the aircraft that dropped the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These particular ladies. These six ladies that are uh, on the DVD cover uh, are all women that actually live in Florida. All six of them uh, knew each other very well and they were my first group that I could get together yeah. and spend two days with uh, shooting interviews. When we started, over 300 of the 1,074 were still alive. There are less than 70 today. Wow, this is what Salute is all about. It's, it's about memories and, and, and the bonding of, of comrades, you know, uh, and the, you've got an insight of that now. You can see how, how I, I, these people Bonded. And, and, and when you make films, uh, the reason I love documentaries is I always have to learn the subject. And that's what's so great about making films like this. You meet people like the Wasp that, that you realize you're inspired by, you're influenced by, and that, that you, can, you have just such pride in our country when, when you meet these type of people. 
Well, I feel the same way doing salute, and I feel the way yeah. that way because you okay. came on the show. Uh, thanks for having and, me. And, and sharing it. Uh, but I'd like you to tell one more time, if somebody wants to get a copy of this mm -hmm. DVD, how are they, they going to do that? Okay, if you want a copy of the DVD for, uh, for yourself, for your, your organization, uh, just go to silverwings-flyingdreams.com. And on that website, you can see a bunch of the shorts that are already on the DVD, and you can order uh, the DVD for yourself. Uh, and uh, uh, there's other options that you can get some of the ones the WASP have already signed. Uh, so if you're lucky enough, like this one here, uh, Kathleen has signed uh, to get one of those. They'll certainly be collector's items. And if you're a teacher, you just go to www.films.com and then just type in the search Silver Wings and you'll come to the page that you can buy it for streaming for your school. And I think that's great, you're getting it out in the school system. It's the most important thing for the Daughters of the American Revolution who helped uh, sponsor the movie. Uh, that's what they're all about, and yeah. that's why I partnered with them, is that it's all about educating our youth about uh, our American history, especially our military history. They, they are a great organization. To all our veterans out there, our active military and their families, we salute you for all you do. Till next time. feel deeper hills seem steeper smiles get wider joy feels brighter words get bolder and winter colder each passing Patience greater, our purpose.